What's going on? Hello, how are you? I'm doing fantastic. Is the sound okay on my end or do I need to go in the back? You sound good. You sound great. Okay. You sound yep. good. Sitting so, here looking out the window and I'm hearing cars pass by. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to try to wait a few minutes to see if some people come in. But if not, we're going to um, just still do it. And then I'll just uh, post it to my story. That way people can go and see it uh, after. Awesome. Awesome. So, yeah. But how has your day been? Oh, my day has been phenomenal. I'm just, I'm excited to be alive, man. <laughs> same, same, same. How about you? Pretty productive. I got some work done today amidst this campaign. It's been tough trying to stay on top of schoolwork and campaign at the same time, you know, but hey, I've, I been trying to, I've been trying to get it done. So last week, last week of classes, so. Okay, okay. You're <laughs> campaigning just like me. <laughs> Right, right. I see that. I was like, okay, I didn't even know that you were campaigning. But that's amazing that we're both campaigning. We're yes, both having, yes. that, having the same experience, sort of, sort of, kind of. So, yeah. And it's good to see you. It's been a long time, man. You right, right, right. <laughs> right. I was um, telling somebody else, they were like, um, they was like, who is that? I was like, ah, uh, she sent me to my first acting classes. <laughs> I was like, yeah. I we finally that. get to uh, talk again and, you know, um, just catch up. So I'm loving it. I'm loving it. I was, I was, I was just sitting in the chair and I was like, who can I get? I was like, God, I was like, God, who can I get? And I was just like, your name just popped in my head. And I was like, okay, okay, God. I was like, okay. Well, I'm honored. Thank you so much for having me tonight. <laughs> my pleasure. My pleasure. So... Yeah, we're just gonna go ahead and get started because I know Instagram um, doesn't like to let people be great either. They, uh, <laughs> they only allow you an hour um, to to do your thing, and then they shut you off. And so I want to um, make sure that we get as much time in as possible to you know get through these questions and motivate some people. So, um, first off, I'm gonna let you introduce yourself. Um, yeah, so you can uh, introduce yourself. Well, my name is Salandia Hammond, also known as Sue Ham Baby, and uh, also came to be known as a thug motivator. Because oh, yeah. Of <laughs> <laughs> because of a string of um, uh, viral videos that was going around, and I was motivating people, but I was being thuggish with it. So uh, <laughs> <laughs> I forgot about that handle. Um, I'm a writer, producer, and a director, and a speaker. And I'm um, also a mother of three beautiful children. All right, all right. Um, and for those of you who don't know, uh, if you're on the live and you don't know who I am, I am Jeremiah McFadden. I'm a junior psychology major at the illustrious South Carolina State University. And I am running to be the seventh Mr. South Carolina State University. Um, and I'm honored to have Miss Sue Han Baby on my live. <laughs> Listen, y'all, I'm so excited. This, 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 such an amazing soul, such a beautiful soul. Just, oh my God, I, I, I can't even, I can't even put into words um, the, just the light that he, that she has been in my life. Um, you know, just, just by, you know, having that giveaway that one time and, you know, seeing something in me to send me to the acting class, it really, um, you know, changed my life and, you know, changed how I saw myself, um, oh, wow. you know. So, you know, um, a lot of people know that my platform is uh, Purpose Over Pain, and I talk a lot about my story, and I'm very um, transparent about the things that I've been through. And so it might not have seemed like it at the time, but I, I, was, I was struggling with my self-esteem at that time um, and, like, just, you know, trying to take a step out you know, um, into the world and to come into myself and find an outlet, something that would, you know, boost me. So um, I just want to thank you for giving me that opportunity. Um, I, I really thank you for that. Thank you. You just made my night, man. <laughs> wow. <laughs> no, tears. no tears. No tears. No tears. No tears. <laughs> no tears. No tears. I'm wow. sorry. That's not the goal. But okay, we're gonna jump right into it. 
um tonight the topic is trusting your process um and i want to i wanted to clarify that because i know that can get a little um misconstrued um by reading that some people could take that as saying like oh whatever path i'm on that must be the right path and i need to just stick to that but i want to say this you have to make sure that you're on the right path so but with that i'll say that um you know, even if you're on the wrong path, it's still a part of your process. Mm -hmm. um, and you have to trust that as well. Um, you know, we, ha we, you can't, everybody doesn't stay on the, on the, on the right path the, the entire, their entire life. We all have been on, on the wrong path at some point. And we have to, we, there has to come a point where we make the turn to get on the right path. So I don't want, I don't want to say that if you're on the wrong path that that's not a part of your process. But mm -hmm. so my first question to you would be, how do you know that you're on the right path? Ooh, that's a good question. You gonna come out the <laughs> gate like that? You ain't gonna let me warm up. <laughs> <laughs> yes, ma'am, yes, ma'am. That's how we do it on Monday Motivation. We give okay. it to the people. <laughs> okay, this, this, this is real, this is real. Okay, this is really good here. Um, that's good. I like that. I'm going to borrow that question on some of my interviews. Um, mm. I think you know it because it feels good, man. It's just mm -hmm. like, it's just like when you're meeting someone and you're falling in like with them and you got those. Come on. Like, come on. <laughs> <laughs> See, I didn't say love because you ain't got I'm it. I'm loving yet. it. I'm loving it already. But you're falling in like with them and just something in your stomach. It just feels good. The energy is there. Their synergy is there. You can't stop thinking about that person, right? Mm -hmm. And, and it, you just want to do the extra thing to make that person want you even more. And I feel like when you're on the right path, at least for me, I feel good. I don't need an alarm clock to wake me up. I don't even need to eat sometimes. And oh, sometimes man. I got to remind myself to stop and bathe because I'm running <laughs> so <laughs> No, that's real. That's, that's real. real. That's real. When I'm writing a script, I'm telling you, I don't want to eat. I don't want to sleep. I don't want to move that's away the from grind. The... Right. Because I'm on the right path. And, and, I, and I, I don't want to veer off. And so I'm just fueled. But it, it's a, it's a feel-good feeling. Um, you can't stop thinking about it. And it seems like everything just lines up for you. And for me, that's how I know I'm on the right path. Even at times when I didn't have the finances, but I knew I was on the right path. And I kept moving and putting one foot in front of the other. God would send people with the resources that would open the door for me. So Damn. it is- That ram in the bush. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so it's just the dots begin to connect, you know? Right. I can definitely agree with that. I definitely agree with with everything you just said. Like it's 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 unexplainable. Like you just you just have that feeling, mm -hmm. and you know. Like I feel like everything. I I can't remember who the song is by, and I know they're gonna get me for this. But there's a song called "Everything Is Everything," and like I take that. Lauren Hill. Like, Lauren Hill. I thought so. I thought so. I don't know why the I was about to say. I was about to say Jill Scott, but I was like, I thought Lauren Hill. I know it was in that same arena though. <laughs> everything is everything, and we're all interconnected, and like there's just an unexplainable feeling like we like there's there's just something in us like something that the creator placed in us to know what our purpose is it's just right. like it's just like any creator like when somebody that whoever created the xbox they placed something in there to for the xbox to know what's the right thing to do when that controller is pressed so you know like you just know like you just know because there's something in you that know that you know you gotta you, you know so when you when you're on that path and you need to know which way is right. You just just look, look just follow your heart. Follow your heart. That's so I it. definitely agree with everything that you just said. I love that. I love that. Jeremiah, you are real deep now. You really <laughs> tighten up. <laughs> I'm a preacher's kid. I'm a preacher's kid. <laughs> oh God. So um, let's see. Next question. Yes, sir. How important are dreams to, to success? Dreams to success. You mean like having visualization or do you mean like just having desire? Right. Well, yeah, how, how important is, you know, because the, the end goal is success or like whatever mm -hmm. success looks, out, looks like for you. How important are dreams or goals or like milestones? How important is that to, um, you know, some people, they just, you know, 
go with the flow and they don't have any goals. They just kind of oh, mosey through. You know, how, how important <laughs> do you think, you know, dreams and setting goals and stuff like that is, is to getting to success? I think or, it's very you know, important. It, it, it's very important because I was one of those persons who used to just go with the flow and the flow <laughs> didn't go nowhere. <laughs> You're flowing in a circle. We in a lazy river. Okay. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Feeling like I'm wandering for 40 years. And I just, I just, you know, you listen. It's just like in a car. If you don't have a destination, you're just going to wander. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're lost, if you don't put in the GPS to where you want to go, how can you be found? So in oh, life, wow. we have to have goals. We have to have dreams to know uh, where we want to be, you know, to get from point A to point B to point C. And so for me, um, I found even during COVID-19 right now, I found that on days that I do not write my goals down, I will get up, turn the TV on, get on the couch and literally binge watch TV and then get ready to go to bed at night and say, oh my God, I feel sick. I didn't get <laughs> anything accomplished. Right. You just feel so and, like, and, and, and uh, I just wasted so much time. Right. And their <laughs> deadlines attached. So. For me, writing down a goal is so important. One, it keeps you on track. One, I believe in a subconscious mm -hmm. mind. I believe that writing down your goals at night is the best thing because your mind can focus on those goals at night and go to work on how to better uh -huh. accomplish that goal. And then Love when you that. wake up in the morning, you're not, you're not fumbling around and trying to figure out what it is I need to do. It's already been written. And so it is. Therefore, get about the business of accomplishing your goals. So to answer your question in a short way, it's very important. You got to have goals. You got to have a dream. Um, you got to have something to work to, to aspire to. And I, I really believe, I'm a firm believer in writing down your objectives at night mm -hmm. and uh, awaking you in the morning. I love that. Yeah. I love that. I had to write that one down. I love that. <laughs> write down your goals at night. Because I, I usually just, you know, I'm like a, whenever I, whenever it pops in my head, I, mm -hmm. I write it down. Or like I go... And I try to, I, I, I noticed that like when, when you actually go and you try to plan something, somebody texted me, um, I think it was yesterday and they said, if you want to make God laugh, then plan. And I'm a, mm -hmm. I'm a, I'm a planner. So like, <laughs> I'll go and I'll try to plan out like everything, but I'll, I'll be sitting there for hours and, and not give, not come up with anything. But like, I, I, I'm going to, I'm going to try that. Writing down my goals at night. Um, I'm going to try that. See, well, see, it, but see, but see, see, here's the thing. I think I think it's good to plan because you know I was military and I was raised by my Me dad, too. who was oh <laughs> right, so, oh, right. That's right. Um, ROTC, right? Air Force. Air Force, right? So you no, actually my, oh. crazy thing. I'm on my seventh year. Really, Jeremiah? How old are you now? I'm 23. Oh my God, time flies. Okay, <laughs> so I just remember taking you to the acting class and then we went to Kiki's and Waffles afterwards. But going back to planning, mm -hmm. so then you understand. And being from a dad who was military and then served two terms in Vietnam, um, for me, the Marine Corps says, hey, failure to, um, says, now, now, now I'm forgetting it. Uh, <laughs> I think I know, I'm, I'm, I'm about to forget it too. I know the, I know the thing, I know the thing. Lord, I can't even think about it now. But anyhow, basically, uh, in layman's term, it's basically if you fail to plan, you fail to win. And me being a creative soul, I like to have free will. So I have to find a, a balance. And it is challenging. But because I have so much free will, sometimes my free will will lead me down the path of not doing anything for a week. <laughs> you know? <laughs> and so... Yeah, I so, totally get that. So what I've learned is... Um, Oh, here, here's the five P's from the Marine Corps. Prior planning prevents piss poor performance. That's six mm. P's. Prior planning prevents piss poor performance. Now, I do believe that God has the divine intervention to come in but I, and take over those plans. But I think that if we give God something to work with, right? And that's why I like to write it down at night. Because when I'm writing it down, it's like I'm writing a love letter to myself and to God. And I'm asking mm. God to help me to achieve these goals and maybe... Uh, to exceed them because I'm thinking about doing it this way. Well, listen, I'm open, God, to you showing me a better way and exceeding um, what I have written. And so I, for me, I have to write something down to kind of keep me on the path because I'll, I'll go to watching YouTube videos. I'll go to doing everything else. And I do know that the true way to, to, to success is you have to be disciplined. Um, even with being a creative, you still have to have discipline in order to this go to that next level. This is true. Yeah, that's true. That's good. 
That's good. I love that. Love it. Um, also, uh, Tiffany Elaine says it's a struggle when you're creative. Yes. Yeah, I was. Yes, yes, it it's is. a struggle when you're creative. It, yes. it's, it's a struggle because this it, it's it's like I said, you just you just you're just so free and you're such a free spirit, and you're like, oh, this 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 that this that, and it's like, uh, you can't really plan it. Like you can't plan it. You, like you, like I said before, like it's kind of, it's kind of like that thin line between whether you're going with the flow or whether you're a creative. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So like it it's, it's a but fine line, but it's I, it, it's a I struggle. I think for me it is a struggle and I think that if you if it's a struggle, I think it's good to bring in other people who are more disciplined and who can mm -hmm. handle that component. But I knew for me starting out as an entrepreneur, I didn't have somebody else, so I had to actually learn how to turn on my business mind. Mm -hmm. until I could get to the point where I could employ people. And I actually asked God for help. And I see you, Tiffany, with the 50 ideas. And <laughs> also, here's something else I did, is I still I wrote my ideas out um, because I was listening to, uh, I forget his name, motivational speaker, and he said something to me that, that's so profound, and I just thought it was amazing. He said, get a journal and write down all of your ideas. And even if you can't execute your ideas, pass that journal on to your children or to your family mm -hmm. members, because maybe they can execute those ideas long after you're gone so that they're not wasted. And I was like, ooh, that's deep. I love that. I, I love it too. And, 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 <laughs> I, and I came to realize when I tried to pursue five, six, eight different things at one time, I realized that all of them were uh, suffering. And so I had to tell myself, and this is what I tell myself, listen, girl, you're not going to die with these ideas in you. You're going to get it done. And if you don't get those other things done, it wasn't meant for you to get done. So just focus on the most important thing and just keep it moving and it'll be all good. So, and that's coming from a creative now. And that took time though. <laughs> <Whew>. <laughs> Listen, okay. <laughs> that's a lot. But that's good. That's good. Um, I just want to say to our viewers, uh, if you guys have questions for us as well, um, feel free to drop them uh, in the comments or the question box. Feel free to ask um, your own questions. I do have my questions here, but I want to open it up to the viewers as well. So if you guys have questions, feel free to drop them uh, and we'll both try to answer. Them. But the next question I have um, is, what is your why? And what makes you get out of bed every morning and do what you do? My why has changed over the years, but um, for the most part, it's the same. It's kind of crazy. My why has been, I have to do this because if I don't do this, then I'll die. Mm. And I mean that figuratively and literally. So I have to do this. Um, but my why has grown to encompass more people. Now I do this also to leave a legacy for my children's 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 children. I heard Steve Harvey say um, that his life changed when he heard someone say, you know, I, I want my great, 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 great grandchildren to know who I am. And I started to think mm. about it. Mm. I don't know my great grandfather. I don't know um, any of my great grandmothers. <laughs> I, right, I only knew one of my great grandmothers. I know my I, great grandmother. And that I was I remember it. a little bit of her, but. She was, was most of what I remember of her, um, she was just sick and my dad was taking care of her wow. until she passed away. But we don't, I don't know any of her, like anything that she did. And right. yeah, so I, yeah, I feel that. You feel it? And so, so, and then I also wanted to reach out to souls that have a dream, but feel that they're trapped. Uh, have a dream but are, are afraid to execute that dream and I wanted to do like Les Brown said I wanted to I want to I want to live a life that outlives me so therefore I want people to be able to consume my content consume my information and be able to say you know what that girl Sue Ham, she was all about being better, doing better, and having better, about living your dreams. And the same way that I consume content of dead men and dead women and it inspires me to go to another level, I want to be able to do that for the people that come many, many, many years behind me. That's big. That's big. <laughs> right. that's, a, so that's, you... that's 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 a lot. That's a lot. And I think I think um that's, that might be an issue with some people. Like they feel that pressure. Like it's something that they want to do, but that that's a lot of pressure to to live up to and to to want to be 
that big. Um, mm -hmm. and there might be fear that comes along with that, you know, um, mm -hmm. wanting to be that great and, you know, not, not knowing how or not um, feeling like you're enough or you have the, the, the resources to be somebody of that magnitude. So um, how, yeah, let me, how let me say this. Let me say this. Mm -hmm. May I say this, Jeremiah? And everybody, uh, I've always said this. Um, everybody's dream is not the same, but everybody doesn't aspire to the same thing because some people just strictly want to work behind the scenes and help me to achieve my dreams. Thank God for that. So I, I, I say this, and I had to learn this lesson. Don't compare your dream or your walk to someone else. Your process is your process. And your, dream is, well. <laughs> your dream is your dream. If your dream is to just, uh, and I don't want to say just, but if your dream is to be an educator and all you want to do is just work in your hometown and educate the children in your hometown, that's a big dream. If your dream is to be the best uh, scientist and discover cures for so many different diseases, that's a big dream. If your dream is to own a janitorial service, right? That's a big dream. So it whatever is. your dream is, it's a big freaking dream because God did not waste dreams. Every dream is important. And I say to everybody, no matter what it is, if you don't compete and compare, right, instead of worrying about competition, instead, just focus on the mission, you're going to have so much joy. Uh, comparison is the thief of joy. I think Franklin Roosevelt said that. I was just about to say that comparison kills. It comparison does. Kills. And, it, and here's the thing that I want to say, when you feel <laughs> like you can't do it, or you feel like, why me? I'm not good enough. And, and don't get it twisted. There are days I still have this. This is what I always fall back on. I fall back on, God did not give me a desire to achieve this dream to tease and to taunt me or to make me go through hell. He <laughs> gave me the desire because that means the very fact that I have the desire means that I can accomplish it. And so in those days when I start to doubt myself or I feel like, man, whatever, I want to quit. I go back to that and my strength becomes renewed. That's good. That's good. That's amazing. So that leads, that kind of leads me to the, to the next question I was just about to add. Um, how can you, well, how, how can we get others' expectations of us out of our head to actualize our purpose? Hey, it's just like Jim, uh, Jim Rohn said. Jim Rohn said, uh, motivation wears off. It's just like bathing. You still got to do it every day, right? So that means people, I always tell people it takes more than motivation to succeed. So what I'm saying it is it takes practice. It's not something that happens overnight. There are some people that are born with that. I don't give a, you know, attitude. What you think <laughs> about me? And I think it's freedom. You understand? Mm -hmm. That's freedom. But others have to grow into that. And so it's just like bathing. It's something that has to be done daily. It's something that you have to be conscious about to realize that the opinions of others is not your business. And as each day you start to practice that and you start to tell yourself that, the journey and the process becomes easier. It becomes more bearable. And as soon as you can really accept that, that's true freedom. Not worrying about what other people are doing, not worrying about how they perceive you, that's true freedom. Now you're ready to execute and in, 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 in be and do and fail and learn and win and cry and run and fall down and get back up. And that's the beauty of the process is that there are peaks and valleys, is that there are wins and losses and learn, learning that takes place and, and that you get to meet people in this process that can help take you to the next level. So don't get me going. <laughs> <laughs> love it, love it. Love it. Um, and you said something about, um, you know, well, while we're on that topic of like not, um, you know, what did I say? Getting rid of the expectations of others, but mm -hmm. I want to go into um, like role models. So mm -hmm. like we know role models are important and we're talking about trusting the process and trusting your, your individual unique process. Mm -hmm. So we know role models are important, but like how important is a blueprint? Like, should we have a blueprint or should we just, like, like we were saying, just go with the, trusting your process and just going with your heart? Because we talked about earlier, following your heart and following you. So how important are role models or like looking up to people? Following, the, following a blueprint, following a, bl a blueprint. Ooh, I can't talk. How, how, how old are you again? 23? Mm -hmm. These are some deep questions. I love it. <laughs> um, I think they're both equally as important. 
And, and, and let me tell you why. I think the blueprint, right? When you have a blueprint or when you have directions, it makes it easier. Um, you have less time for trying to figure it out because the blueprint is there. You have a mentor. That's, you know, that's, that's the, beauty, the beauty of having a mentor. They, they, they save you from losing your hair. They save you from having headaches. They give you the shortcut. Mm -hmm. But let's just say well, there is no blueprint. Or even if there is a blueprint, in your gut, you feel like, listen, I need to go this way. I think you should always obey your gut. I believe that your gut is the creator talking to you. Mm -hmm. And prime example for me being in Winsburg County, there was not a blueprint here on how to do stage plays. You know, I I'm right beside you in Lake City. <laughs> <laughs> there is no blueprint. We had to, we had to come up on our own. <laughs> right. I wish there was a blueprint. I wish you know? there was a blueprint. Because being a trailblazer, it's very challenging and sometimes it's very lonely and it's very costly and it's very painful. But mm. when you have that dream inside of you, right? You got to go through with it. So for me, I had to create my own blueprint because there was nothing there. And I'll, I'll tell you, one, it was exciting. It was exhilarating. It was, it was, it was intoxicating. Um, I loved it because it was like we were figuring it out. And, but not only figuring it out, we were actually going forward and living our dreams. But on the other hand, oh, my God, it was challenging. Because I was like, I don't, I, I've, I've never gone down this road before. What if I get to this road and there's a freaking roadblock? Or there's a detour and I got to go back? What do I do? Right. What do I do? I've invested money. I've invested time. Mm. You know? So I think it's important to have both. The blueprint is amazing. It's amazing, but don't let that be an excuse as to why you can't get out and do what you need to do. Mm. Because, let me say this, I, I'm gonna end that with this. Maybe, just maybe, you're the person to create that blueprint for where you are. Come on now. So that others, like... <laughs> so that come, others on. can come through, walk through that door. You know what I'm saying? So maybe you're the person that's supposed to open that door that's supposed to usher in the new people for that era. And I can definitely attest to that. I can definitely attest to that. I I have learned that through my throughout my life. Like you said, we're from we're from, listen, <laughs> the same the same street basically. Yeah. <laughs> the, the street goes straight from King Street to to Lake City to to Florence. It's all one street. Um, and so you know there like like we said earlier, there wasn't a blueprint. And so, but I knew that I wanted something different than than mm -hmm. what I was surrounded by. And so just um you know, just realizing, okay, you know, like I said, this isn't what I want and going the opposite way. And at the time when I was doing it, I didn't know that I was, you know, making a path for those, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. you know, like my nephews and nieces and stuff. Cause I'm a first generation college student. Wow. Um, and I'm adopted. So no, none of my family on my biological side, wow. nor any of my family on my adopted side Everyone went to college. So I'm I'm the first on both sides. Like and so, you know, now I'm looking back like like wow, I'm really I'm really setting a standard. I'm really and I really have people looking up to me and I really I really gotta do this. Like I like and at, at one point I was like, I can't mess up and I was like, No, I can I can mess up because yes, you know, you that, 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 you know that, teaches, that teaches them to get back up, you know. But yeah, I can def I definitely I, I feel that and I can attest to that. Like you gotta you might you just might be the one that's setting the that's setting the trail. That's, yeah. So I love that. Can I, I say something that. right there? Mm -hmm. I love how you corrected yourself because I I think a lot of times too when we're the first one, we have that pressure like, oh I gotta get it right. I gotta be perfect. I can't mess up. And I'm so glad you came to the realization that it's okay to mess up. You know, people want authenticity nowadays. They they don't just want to see the wins. They're like, mm -hmm. dude, I wanna see when you busted your face. <laughs> like Right. When, when when life when life and, and and the trials and the tribulations took the air out of you, I want to see when it sucker punched you and uppercut you, you know. So mm -hmm. um, that's what people want to see because then they will really know that they can get back up because they watched you do it. Right, right. Whew. Again. You're good, man. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we have a question um, from. Uh, Miss Tiffany Lane. Um, sorry if I mispronounced any part of your name. Uh, she said, Mama Sue, how do you get people to catch your vision? Ooh. Okay, your question. That's a good one. 
Um, for me, here's what I... Here's what I have learned to do. And I always like to speak from my experience because everybody's experience is different, but I, I like to tell people what's worked for me and not speak in theory. For me, the way I caught, uh, people caught on to my vision was enthusiasm. I'm always enthusiastic about my vision. I'm, I'm yes, telling you. you are. <laughs> and there's something about enthusiasm. It ignites others to want to join the movement. Number two is I'm consistent about my vision. Uh, meaning in promoting and marketing it. I'm telling everybody. I know people are like, oh, don't tell people your dreams. Listen, I cannot enlist people to share my vision if I don't share it with them. So I'm consistently sharing marketing, promoting and advertising my vision. And those are the two things. Oh, and the third thing is my vision is bigger than me. And so when I bring other people in and say, listen, if we work together, this is how we can have a win-win that's how um the party grows so mm -hmm. those are the three things that i do all right good question that is a good question so we're gonna go to the next one mm -hmm. um how can i be truly content with my process when there are so many people telling me directly or indirectly that i'm not on the right path Ooh. so like for example, like we were saying, we're coming from where we come from. We're surrounded by negativity or people that, um, you know, don't know how to get out or don't know, mm -hmm. you know, they, they didn't have a blueprint and they're stuck in that in that um, mentality of, oh, I just got to, you know, do whatever to make it work or I just got to, mm -hmm. you know. So how can you get, how, how do you get through that? Or you know, how, do you, how do you basically break the glass ceiling and get out of that um, mentality? Uh, well, here's what I can tell you. I knew, like I said, ever since I was a young girl that I was supposed to be in entertainment. But yet, being from a rural area, I was afraid. And at the time when I was growing up, because I'm 46, there, you know, Atlanta, Georgia wasn't popping like that. But so it was either New York or California. And I was like, I'm, I, I don't have the funding to go there. Um, I didn't want my parents to mortgage their house to send me to college. Not only that, I didn't, I wasn't ready to go to college. I just, you know, I was just, I wanted to travel and make money. Mm -hmm. And so I joined the military and, um, but there were people, even though I was good with my gift growing up, there were people that were like, are you sure that you can do that? Um, maybe that's not what you want to do. Maybe you need to just make a living. And I succumbed to that for a little bit. And then it just came to the point where it was just like, you know, I can't help it if perhaps you don't see what I see or feel what I feel, but I know what I see and I know what I feel. And I refuse to be miserable and appease you while I hurt internally. And so I just came to the realization that my dreams are more important than anything because my dreams are vital to me being healthy. And I mean this 100%. If I am not fulfilling my purpose, I actually begin to get sick. I actually begin to feel like, what I, feel you know what I'm saying? It's, yeah, it's I'm like, draining. it's like, and I, I'm, I'm, I'm inspired in this moment because I'm, I'm realizing now how similar our stories are. Um, in that we, like you said, we come from a rural area and we didn't know mm -hmm. how we were gonna get out, but we found a way. We, uh, we, my parents didn't have the means either. And so I was like, okay, I, I gotta go to the military to mm -hmm. make it work. So yep, that was that was um, the way out. Military or job. So yeah. But I left. I left the military because it was just like yo. I was tired of trying to make my plan B look like my plan A because the military was a plan B. And so I was just like, you know, I gotta I gotta try this thing. I don't care what people think about me. I don't care how I look to people. Even when for years I was saying I'm gonna open up a studio here in King Street, South mm -hmm. Carolina. People are like, that's crazy. When I said that I was going to launch stage plays and that people from around the world were going to come here to King Street, South Carolina and know about King Street and Williamsburg County, people are like, that's crazy. But now there's people all across this world that actually do that, come to our show, yeah. and they know all about Williamsburg County. And so my answer to that question is, you got to do you. You really got to be truthful to yourself, to thine own self be true. Because if you don't, if you live in that lie, 
you are going to eventually die. Mm. You will eventually die. So live in the truth. The truth and the light is so much better. Yeah. That that's that's so true. That is so true. Mm. <laughs> that is so true. <laughs> I'm not I was gonna I was gonna add to it. I'm I'm gonna leave it right there where it's at. I'm gonna just leave it right there where it's at. That was good. Uh so next question. Uh is there a such thing as true contentment or happiness? I can't speak for anybody else, but I gotta tell you, yes. Now you again, life has ups and downs. We got the phases, right? True happiness for me, knowing that my family, everybody's doing well, they're healthy. True, true, true happiness for me is being on stage. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> um, true, true, true happiness for me is writing a script and seeing the actors bring those words mm. to life and rehearsing and going in and doing the marketing and the advertising and then on show night, seeing it all come together. That's, that's yeah. true happiness. You know, that's because for me, like, like for me, I'm downloading what the creator sent to me by way of story. Mm -hmm. And then so to actually produce it on stage, it's like, boom, there it is, guy. Woo, there it is. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. And I feel, it, it's so crazy because I feel like that's when I'm the closest to God is when I am actually using the gifts that was given to me and including other people in Definitely. that and helping them to fulfill their dreams because Definitely. again had the platform not been created they may not have had the opportunity so it's just like for me when I was growing up the dream was just about Sue but then he did that Ephesians 320 on me and <laughs> he exceeded my dreams and he was like yo you got to include other people because you know what it's like to want to do something and then not be an opportunity. And so to be able to create these platforms and to have other people to come through, it's just like a blessing. And it, it, I feel like, I feel like I'm a grand, I am a grandma literally now, but I, just, <laughs> I feel like I'm a grandma to so many people now or an auntie. Let me go with auntie. Yeah. We go with auntie. We go with auntie. <laughs> <laughs> auntie Sue. I bleached my hair. This is blonde, okay? This is <laughs> come on. I'm, I'm not gray. <laughs> <laughs> so let's see. Let's see. We're gonna go on to the next. Um, can we really encourage people without judging them and ourselves? Uh, okay. <laughs> Jesus. All right. Listen. <laughs> <laughs> you are a great interviewer. You can ask some great questions. Uh, <laughs> listen, for real though, I had to ask God, listen, God, um, help me to be less judgmental, not just of others, but of myself. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I'm really, really working on that. And it's not, it's not like it's a bad thing all the time. It's just sometimes I see things and I'm just like, why, why would you do that? You know, why, why would you say that? Like, do you really think like that? And then I'm like, oh, pull it back in, pull it back in. <laughs> so it is challenging. I'll just mm -hmm. be honest with you. It is challenging and it's something that I work on daily, just like I work on motivation daily. Um, I work on not being judgmental. But the great thing about it is I'm not bad, but I do have flare ups. And at those times I pull myself in. But I think that people who judge all the time, they're really not happy. Mm. This is, it's impossible for you to be happy because you're too busy critiquing and downplaying other people. So it's impossible for you to be happy. <laughs> <laughs> it is. That is so true. It is. But when you're happy and you're good and you're feeling good in life, you get to the point where, like Kevin Hart says, you show. to show up you know and that's that's where i'm at now i'm like hmm, okay and i'm like you know that that's what honestly, you like if honestly. that's what you like then that's what you like that's what you do then that's what you do <laughs> i just hmm. so and if we're gonna take it to the bible i'm you know, like i said i'm a preacher's kid i feel mm -hmm. like people that judge people it's like hmm because 
You're judging me to hell, but you're going to hell too because Ooh, don't don't go there. <laughs> don't go, don't get me started there. That's another conversation. But I'm letting. <laughs> oh, we gonna let that go? Okay. All right. That's another conversation. That's another conversation. Oh yeah. Um. Let's see. It was, I think there was another question from uh, uh, Miss Tiffany Lane. Could you clarify your question again? Uh, she said, how do I handle that to grow my business? What's, what's that? Uh, let's see. If I, I think I had another question. Oh, this is, this is just a, a person. Uh, what is one of your favorite quotes? One of my favorite quotes? I love a good quote, so I just had to throw that one. <laughs> uh, one of my quotes by Calvin, cool Calvin Coolidge, and I may not quote it correctly, but it's my favorite. I should know it, right? But I'm being <laughs> um, it's one. It, it, it says, um, I have two of them. The first one is by somebody I don't know. I got to find out who said it. I always forget. But it says, anything worth doing is worth doing poorly at first. Mm. That means get started. Don't make excuses, right? It ain't going to be good. You ain't gonna get a ten right out the gate. You gotta, you gotta grow into that ten. So anything worth doing is worth doing poorly at first. And then Calvin Coolidge said, um, "There's nothing more common than unsuccessful, talented people." And he says it takes more than talent to achieve success. It takes persistence. And I love that because I used to wonder all the time, how come I would see somebody, and I hope I'm not judging, but maybe I am judging, but I would see people on shows and I'm like, they're really not that great with singing. How did they, how did they make it to that show? <laughs> and, and, and I'm like, cause I know my cousin and them, they can blow. And they were, they were <laughs> like, they would like win everything, right? The car and the money and the, and the record deal. But then I, I came across that quote and that and it, it explains so much to me. There are a lot of talented people in the world, but you can't make it just on your talent. You gotta have drive and persistence. And that's why someone who may not be as talented as you may surpass you because you resting on your talent and you ain't trying to go the extra mile. Whereas that person who's not as talented is grinding. They're doing whatever they can do to get to the top. <laughs> right, so, you sitting there waiting to be discovered. <laughs> right. You, you, while, they, you, while they out there grinding. <laughs> right. You know, you happen to be the big fish in a small pond and you think you done made it. And I'm like, okay, but your town got 2,000 people in it. You know what I'm saying? You ain't made it. So, um, <laughs> yeah, it keeps me humble. And so I'm just like, you always got to grow. And for some people, they don't want to be known worldwide. And that's cool. That's really cool. But for that person that wants to be known worldwide, and you're just sitting on the couch, it's not gonna work like that. Right, right. So um, she, Miss Tiffany Lane clarified her question. She said, how do, how does she, uh, how does she handle that to grow my business? That being people taking advantage of her um, as a personal director and not paying her. As a personal director, you mm -hmm. said? Um, yeah, I pinned the question. Uh, I don't know if you can see it, but she said, how do I handle people taking advantage of me as a director and not paying me? Um, I would get a contract. I, I would get, I would, uh, I would request 50% of my fee up front and I would get a binding contract. And if they do not honor the contract, I would actually pursue <laughs> legal ramifications. Listen, get in the writing. <laughs> yeah. Black and white. That picture <laughs> is something serious. Absolutely. <laughs> Listen, Absolutely. There is such thing as verbal contract, but it's nothing like that paper trail. So I, I definitely agree. I definitely I, agree. I do contracts with anybody that I'm involved with when it comes to our stage productions. Anybody that I'm involved with, I do contracts. Because sometimes right. sometimes you can forget what you said. It's not that you're trying to be malicious or you have ill intent. Sometimes mm -hmm. you can forget actually what was said in the conversation and now y'all about to have an argument over not remembering what was actually said. But when you have it in black and white, it prevents amnesia. Right. She said, mm -hmm. she said, that's the hard part because it's my people. That's, that's so, that's, that's so true. You know, in this, in this, in this world and you know, 
we kind of it's kind of like every you know especially in the black community people want to want you to just always look out because you know we don't get that from the outside world we don't, they don't look out for us we have to look out for ourselves right and so you know so people in our community expect the handout and it's kind of hard you know to turn your people down but i would say to that miss tiffany um get the contract tiffany get the contract <laughs> get the contract um get the contract put set your price set your price yes. Put it in writing. Yes. They don't. They don't go to any other store and say, "Hey, can I, can I get this? Can I get that for the load?" They pay. They they save up their money and they go work until they can get it. But then they want to come to you, ask you for a handout or for for a discount. No, sorry. Not unless there's some type of bartering service going on. Now, if you guys are bartering where you're doing something for them and they're doing something for you, that's totally different. But other than that. Let them know at the gate, get the contract. And I think, too, when you step to people with your contract, it lets them know, listen, I'm ready and I'm serious. Because I've seen right. the look on people's faces when I'm like, okay, I need you to sign a contract if you're going to be a part of this production. And also here are the rules and the regulations. So you can't say you didn't know that this is the code of conduct, co code of conduct that we want you to adhere to because you signed it and you got a copy of it. So Love it. Love it. So, um... Again, if anybody else has any um, more questions, that's all my questions. Great um, questions. <laughs> that, that's all my questions. Um, but it, uh, we do have uh, a few, like 15 minutes until uh, IG kicks us out. So if anybody else has any questions, feel free to ask. If you have anything else you want to expand on, um, you can do that as well. Let me ask you, Jeremiah, what are your plans after school? What are you going to do? I know you're majoring in psychology, I think you said. Yes. Are you going to do any more acting? Um, I do want to, like actually um entertainment like music and acting and all that is my uh like that's that's I feel like that's my passion that's where I'm meant to be and I'm I'm slowly like just now realizing that that's my true passion and mm -hmm. psychology is is just kind of um the background of it all like I love I just loved well I I love not I, I shouldn't say loved but. <clears throat> I just love understanding the mind and um, how people work um, and why people do what they do. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So, you know, yeah. So that's why I chose psychology over, you know, majoring in music or anything like that, because I feel like um, psychology, I don't know. I just, I just love psychology and I just love people. So I feel like I could get, if I could get to know people, then mm -hmm. I could I could achieve anything because we make the world without us uh, without sure. without us on the world like it we would just have Earth would just be Earth there would, there would be nothing going on so right you know um I felt like it wasn't enough to learn how the world works it's, cool. it it was enough though to to learn people and learn how people work that's very smart so. I think learning people is so important people are the most valuable resources resource there is people in time so yes it, it's so yes. important. But I didn't answer your question. To answer your question, um, what, I'm, what I plan to do after high school, I do plan to, um, you know, uh, do my music thing, you know, go harder with my music and acting. Um, but with psychology, I, I want to get my master's and eventually get my doctorate and open up my own practice because there is a, a big stigma, um, especially in the Black community, around mm -hmm. mental health. Um, and there's not a lot of Black male... Um, you know, psychiatrists or psychologists, uh, especially in rural areas. And I feel like there's, there's a lot of issues that um, we see in, in society today that could be fixed with just people talking about it mm. and just, you know, people getting this notion out of their head that if you are depressed or you have anxiety that something's wrong with you. Like, it's not, it's not, no uncommon or un it's not a bad thing to go talk to somebody about what's going on in, inside or you know, depression is, is bad i love that i i commend you and i love that and you're right there are not a, um a lot of doctors uh that look like you that exist and there is a stigma in the black community and um is there any way if there is any way i can help you in your journey help you with your process i'm here for you Oh, thank you so much. Uh, listen, I know my resources. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> it might take me a minute to think of I'll be on a chair just thinking like, okay, who who do I know? Who do I know? But eventually it'll come to me. I'm like, oh yeah, I remember I met this person. Like, because it's God is amazing. Like mm -hmm. the way that, and like especially during this campaign, um, just the way that He has, you know, placed the people in my life. And I'm thinking like, wow, like this is okay. This is why, you know, it's in hindsight. And I was like, dang, like this is why I met this person. Like th at that time, like so now I can go and you know, use them for this and that. And like this is why this happened to me. So yep. like, now. I can't, yeah, so. You, you know, I'm, it's I'm funny grateful. that you say that. Um, and, and I might seem weird and crazy, but hey, you're studying psychology, so you can analyze me. Not judge me, just, <laughs> analyze, just analyze me. But, <laughs> but it's funny to me how life is like that. And I like to, it's almost like playing yes. the game of life, yes. right? The synchronicities and the reason as to why things happen and what this number means or what does mm -hmm. what is nature trying to tell me how is God speaking to me and it's like it, like i'll wake up sometimes and be like okay what am i gonna learn today what's right it's gonna seem weird right. and out of place right now but a week or a year from now it'll it make just perfect all make sense, sense. yes i love <laughs> yeah. it <laughs> it just all makes sense, like like the old people say, "By and by, you understand." Right, I by understand what that means. And like I now. never got that, but it just—it's like, why is life like that? Like I don't yeah. know why, but it just is, and it's so amazing. I love it, it so much. I love and it. It's fun like that. I love it. It is. It is so much fun. It it makes life worthwhile to just you know just have faith and just just have faith and just just walk by faith and not by sight and then, by like sight. like we, like we were saying earlier just not planning it and just you know being authentically and uniquely you and mm -hmm. just going just just doing it and just not being afraid to you know i don't think there's any more questions i didn't see any more but um i want to thank you so much so 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 much for coming on and motivating the people doing what you do best um I want to thank you for, you know, all that you poured into me, uh, like you said, years past, and just for believing in me and oh, man. being a part of who I am today. I want to thank you so much. Um, so, yeah. Um, can, can I say something? Yeah, yeah. Thank you for sharing that with me. And I got goosebumps as I'm saying it, but thank you <laughs> for sharing. And let me tell you why. Sharing that with me because... Sometimes we're all human. Sometimes in life we wonder, are we really making a difference? Do we really matter? Mm. And so when you can hear from the lives that you've touched and influenced and that they are progressing in a great way, it does a lot. It inspires me and it makes me want to go out and do even more. So thank you. Keep excelling. <laughs> I'm here for you and I mean that. If there's anything I can do to help you or get you connected with someone, that's exactly what I will do because um, we need more success cases like you. Yes. Well, all right, my viewers, my bulldogs, my fellow bulldogs, make sure you guys, I hope you guys enjoyed tonight's Monday motivation. I hope that you were inspired, encouraged to just live another day or, or that it helped you to trust your unique process. But don't forget to vote me to be your seventh Mr. South Carolina State on April 30th. And Listen, one more thing before you go, okay. I got to plug this. Claudine right. Schofield, Claudine Schofield, she's watching. She has a show on KISS 98.5. Claudine Schofield, get this young man on your show. Claudine he has Schofield. A, he has a story to tell. He shared his story with me a couple of nights ago. He has a story to tell, Claudine. Get him on your show, please, um, Claudine Schofield. Shout out to everybody that's watching right now. Shout out to SHB Care. <laughs> Thank you so much. I don't, I don't want. I want to. I want this to save so I can um, post it. So we got to get out. All oh right. my God, this is so good. You know we can talk all night, but yes. um, we, Instagram not gonna let us be great. And I don't want it. I don't want to lose this. This footage. This. I don't want to lose it. So, again, make sure you guys vote for me on April thirtieth. Um, yeah, I'm. I'm. I'm a little full right now. That's why I'm flustered. I'm, I just. I just <laughs> learned so much. And um, oh my God. Okay. That's it. That's all. Vote for <laughs> Jeremiah McFadden, people. Love you, man. That's it. That's all. I love you so much. Thank you again. Peace uh, out. Peace. <laughs>